Guardians are not always fire-breathing dragons, safeguarding the treasure, nor knights in gleaming armor. They often walk among us, just like Catalina or Tumakete. Who is Catalina? A name spoken with great affection and from all over the island. Even the wild inhabitants who once wandered at distant mountains were known to speak of her with respect. When strong winds stirred out the water of Tanyon Strait and storms approached the sea, the elders we gather their grandchildren around the flickering coconut lamb and to share the legend of Catalina of Tumaquete. Long ago in Tumaquete, Philippines, there lived a man named Panok, who earned his livelihood by going around the town every day and selling delicious coconut water. Despite his humble circumstances, Banok was held in high regard by the community, who extended their kindness to him and his daughter, Catalina. Everyone was fond of Catalina, for she was not only a vision of beauty, but also incredibly hardworking and always showed good manners to those around her. However, she was also quite peculiar. At the age of 16, she seldom utters a word and could often be found gazing out of the sea in her long white dress. Now and then, she would suddenly stand upright and clasping her hands together and gaze upon the sky for a long period of time as if witnessing and communing with something invisible to the rest of the world. Their strange behaviours led to people to believe she possessed mystical abilities. Piracy has a long history of attacks and raids in the area. Unfortunately, the peaceful people of Tumakete were not spared from this fate. A day came when a fleet of ships appears off the coast of the island, carrying hundreds of ruthless pirates who landed ashore and launched a brutal assault on the innocent islanders. Many lives were lost, including Catalina's father, Banok, who became one of the casualties. But the pirates' cruelty didn't stop there. They looted and set fire to the houses, and taking captive all the women they could find before sailing back to their home island. Among the captives was young Catalina, who remained silent on the deck. Others tried to comfort her, but she gave no reply, but sat quietly with her eyes fixed on the sky. All of a sudden, she rose to her feet and leapt into the water. The other captives were taken aback and concerned that she might drown, for the shore is a great distance away. But just like a miracle, instead of sinking, she gracefully touched down on the surface of the sea and walked across the waves towards her home island. Utterly astonished by this extraordinary sight, the pirates made no attempt to stop her, and instead observed in a state of awe and fear as she reached the shore safely. During the attack, many inhabitants of the island were able to flee and seek refuge in the forest. They ran out to greet Catalina upon her return but the young girl spoke to no one. She simply walked in silence through the burning town towards Dalukto, a thunder mountain. Legends speak of a monstrous beast inhabiting this very mountain, known as the Sigbin, 
its bloodthirsty predator terrorized all who crossed its path. The description of the sickbin varies greatly from one region to another, with some likening it to a goat, reptile, bird, bat, and kangaroo, amphibian, or a combination of these creatures. Here in Thunder Mountain, they would say to have the body of a monstrous crow, but yet beneath its neck and sprouted two long legs resembling those of a grasshopper. With its legs, it could leap in great distances without needing its wings. The Sigbin devoured anyone who dared to approach its territory. So, when the people saw Catalina beginning her ascent up the mountain, they pleaded with her to turn back. Ignoring their warnings, she continued her climb higher and higher, until her white dress appeared as nothing more than a tiny dot on a mountainside. Suddenly, Catalina came to a hole and raised her hands in the air. At that moment, a spine-chilling shriek pierced the air, and a fearsome sickbing came hurtling down the mountain. It seemed to be in a state of great fear, and taking enormous leaps, and screaming in sheer terror. It leapt over people's heads, and crossed the narrow channel, and vanished into the mountains of the island of Cebu. With the departure of the sickbin, people rushed up to the mountain searching for Catalina. To their sorrow, they could find no trace of her. People dedicated themselves to the reconstructions of the devastated town. With each passing day, the hope of ever seeing Catalina again began to fade. They lived in peace for several years, until the fleet of pirate ships reappeared on the coastline. This time, the men were ready to fight, arming themselves with bolo knives and whatever weapons they could find. They gathered on the shore to confront the pirates, where women led the children and animals into the woods to seek refuge. They fought bravely for their fallen loved ones, for their homes and their freedom, successfully driving the enemy back to the sea. But more pirate ships arrived with reinforcements. The islanders soon found themselves outnumbered, exhausted, and on the brink of defeat. Unexpectedly, the clouds form a bridge that stretch from Thunder Mountain to the town. To everyone's surprise, Catalina crossed the bridge with the beehives in her hands. As she uttered words, a swarm of bees it flew out of the hive. But Catalina wasn't done yet. She waved her hand and spoke words of command. And the bees transformed into little men armed with long sharp spears. They charged the pirates and eliminated every last one of them. And seeing that the people were now safe, Catalina with a beehive still in her hand, silently crossed back over the bridge and soon vanished into the mountain. The astonished people soon surrounded the little warriors with gratitude and questions, but received no answer. Instead, they regrouped and dashed into the forest, then up the mountain, and soon disappeared from sight. Ever since then, Tomagete has remained free from pirate attacks, and a monstrous sickbin never made a comeback to the island. 
Some believe the bloodthirsty creature still lurks in the mountains of the island he escaped to, continuing to instill fear in the local inhabitants. As for Catalina, it is said that she still resides in Thunder Mountain, and a legend continues whisper by fireside storytellers. A mysterious girl who walked on water, banished the sick bin, and saved the ancestor from the clutches of the pirates. <laughs>